What is an efficient yet robust way to architect an API solution in the cloud? My name is Whitney Lee. I'm on the cloud team here at IBM. Let's talk about the foundation of our system. For me, that's source control. Source control is also can be called an artifact repository, and the most popular version is Git. So what do we want to store in our repository? We want to store all the artifacts related to our, what will eventually be our final system. So a good example would be server configuration files. So for example, we'd want to store a file for our development environment, one for our test environment. This is our server configuration file and one for our production environment. That's a great start. What else do we want to store in our artifact repository? Well, if we're building an API solution, we're going to want to store all of the artifacts related to our APIs, so our API definition files. So we have a definition file for API 1, for API 2, and for API 76. Just kidding, API 3. Great. So I also know in my final system, I want to have pipeline builds. So now's a good time to define the tasks in the, in the pipeline file for that. So we'll build task one, task two, And then we're also going to want our pipeline run file to be defined here in our source control. So source control is great. It's also called infrastructure as code because we're defining the infrastructure of our system before that system is even built. This provides visibility into what's happening and a great collaboration in the team. In addition, if any of the pieces of the system fail, they can be rebuilt very easily from our definition files. So let's build out our cluster. A Kubernetes cluster, just like any, ours is going to have, we'll have physical resources. So we'll have memory and CPU for our nodes. And then we'll need physical disk space for storage too. So that's the physical resources behind our cluster. And then let's think about where we want to start. Let's start with our development environment. So we'll build the development environment in our cluster. And that's going to be built according to the definition, the specifications we've already defined in our repository. So let's say we have a developer. And our developer is working on an, a new API. And that new API, very cleverly, is going to be called API 4. And the developer is using our dev environment to work that out. So let's say a developer feels like API 4 is ready to go. What we want is a pipeline build that's going to take that, that API 4 and promote it all the way up to production. So that pipeline build is going to need to get triggered. And so we'll, in this case, we'll trigger it by having our developer, when the API is ready, to push that definition file into our source control. So that's going to trigger a webhook, which is going to trigger our pipeline build. So let's say task one of our pipeline build, maybe that task job is to check our Kubernetes environment look for an environment called, called test. And if there's not one there, to build one according to the specs defined in our test server configuration file. So our task is going to, our task one is going to trigger a build of a test environment. And then let's say task two 
what it does is whatever API triggered the webhook that triggered the pipeline build, it's going to put that API into the test environment and run a suite of tests on that API. So in that way, this one pipeline build that was defined here has promoted our API from dev environment to the test environment. Great. Now our API is ready to go to production. Or not. We can do more to make sure it is ready before it goes all the way to our production site. So what, let's say we have our production environments built in our cluster. And that production environment already has our APIs 1, 2, and 3 in it. What we can do is also build a canary environment. So we'll define our canary environment in our repo. And we want our canary environment to be an exact replica of our production environment. So our canary environment also then has a APIs 1, 2, and 3 already running. So what we can do here, let's consider our end user. Our end user wants to make a call into our cluster. That call is going to go through a gateway to get into the cluster. And then that gateway is going to send the traffic to a load balancer. The load balancer is going to divide where the traffic goes between prod and canary. So for a canary environment, it might route, say, 1% of traffic to the canary environment. It could be any number you choose, but it's going to be a small percentage. And then the rest of the traffic will go into production. So in this way, the API 4, once it's in the canary environment, it experiences some real-world web traffic to make sure it is ready before it's promoted all the way into production. Something else that I think it would be important to build into our API solution would be logging and metrics collecting. So we can collect logging and metrics from all of the environments that we've built. We can, and we will, and we should. And with those logging and metrics, we can go one step further and use tools like Prometheus or Grafana to put those metrics in a UI a, in a human readable form with graphs and manipulated in a way that best serves the company's interests. So the players that are interested in the system would be a business analyst, for example. That person would definitely want, especially be interested in the graphics and the insights that the logging and the metrics provide. Um, an operations manager. That person would be interested in our uh, logging and metrics, but also interested in the infrastructure as code and what's going on technically. And then we might have an architect, too, who is keeping an eye on the source control and on the system as a whole. So what's worth mentioning here is this is all built on a Kubernetes cluster. But the tools like the pipeline build, the load balancer, the logging and metrics collecting and displayed, those are all going to be third-party tools that are installed and maintained separately from the Kubernetes cluster itself. The other choice is to use a robust platform like OpenShift that's built on top of Kubernetes. And with OpenShift, pipeline tools, load balancers, logging and metrics, and role-based access control are all built into the platform and maintained with the platform, in addition to a host of other benefits. So in conclusion, this solution is beneficial because it uses infrastructure as code, which provides collaboration, visibility, and um, a source of truth if any piece of the system should go down. We also have rapid API promotion from dev all the way up through production. And you have control over that. You don't have to use pipelines for every step of the way, but you definitely can. 
And not only is it rapid, but it is very low risk because it's tested in a test environment and tested again as a canary deployment. And then finally, we have the logging and metrics collection and display. Thank you. If you have questions, please drop us a line below. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. And don't forget, you can grow your skills and earn a badge with IBM Cloud Labs, which are free browser-based interactive Kubernetes labs.